Okay, top sport question of the week from Nick. For an aspiring, or for a young person aspiring to come into the wagering space full time, how realistic is it to be able to make a living at horse racing betting, uh, given the current state of the industry, account restrictions, POC taxes, etc.? Um, this is really relevant, especially uh, if you are somebody who starts so young, just somebody who hasn't got a lot of experience, or you you know you take your punting seriously, or you you know you, you're a serious hobby punter and you're trying to go pro. Or, you're wondering what it would take to go pro, um, would you do it? John, what would you do? Like if you were starting again now with um, a, limited amount of, uh, yeah, a limited amount of knowledge, um, but you love the game and you, 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 you know, you, you, you obviously um, have a view on different aspects of it. What would your advice be if, if uh, um, young, young Walter, Stepped up well, to the plate and said, "Dad, I want to be a pro punter like you, like whoever." Oh, firstly, I'd like to think that since I was about sixteen years old, there would be very few less, most very more, very few more passionate people about. Well, I'll say New South Wales racing because that's where I've spent the most of my life and most of life on track, chasing race meetings um, since I was sixteen. So it's in my blood for sure. Uh, lived and breathed it. And if my son now said to me, I want to have any sort of interest in racing, I would 1,000% be against it, wouldn't let him near it. Uh, I'd be very surprised, and this is a horrible thing for me to say, that racing will be... So he's a seven-year-old at the moment. By the time he was 18 and I thought he wanted to get a job, if things continue the way they are, I'd be very surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if racing wasn't even here. So, and I nearly cry when I say that, but... Um, yeah, I think it's in dire straits, and I think just from a professional punting perspective, if, if that's where you want to go into, I think it's going to be near impossible. I think to, by the time in the next two to three years, uh, if things continue on down the line they are, which I don't think they will because it has to come to a head. Uh, it's, it's, it's you know, the, 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 the powers that be believe that you, that anyone, and this sounds t horrible, right? Like they don't believe that you can win it racing and they don't believe that people that think they can win at racing are important to the industry therefore they believe the, the taxes and the changes of prices and the changing in the someone said the word ecosystem the other day about racing and really to me that's what it's all affecting they don't understand that turnover and punters and having people turn over money is the lifeblood and center of the whole ecosystem and they don't understand what they're doing by poisoning that core of the whole ecosystem and it's just going to spread like wildfire, there's so many people pulling out of this industry now. You know, big people. I'm talking about big syndicate syndicates, a lot bigger than than I could ever be. Um, and it's and it's funneling, and it's just going to keep funneling down. If if Betfair goes, it's going to be another huge blow. If um, you know, silly things like uh, oh, you know, things change, markets change from 130 to 135 or 140 percent. What does that do to pricing long term? How do you bet through it? Uh, if Betfair's gone, how do you bet through it? It's just, it's really worrying. Um, you know, I. I yeah, I just just hope that someone that's got some sort of logic gets into power soon and, and puts a lot of people's heads together and they understand that, you know, it's it's radically, it's not even close to, to the, the, the right set of, the taxing really is where it all comes back to and the way that the corporates, you can't even blame the corporates anymore. I used to be the greatest corporate hater in the world. They, they, they can't operate now unless they win 15% on turnover off a client. Like, how can that be a good for the industry if you've got to lose... Every time you have a hundred dollar bet, you've got to lose fifteen of it for for the for it to be viable for a, the corporate to even hold the bet. Mm. Like, how can that be positive? Um, I'm a little bit more positive. Hmm. Good. You I are, hope John. you are. Please, please help me. Um, okay. There's so many different factors to this. The first thing I want to say is just while I think of it. Um, there's a fellow by the name of Richard Irvine. Many of you will know who he is. Uh, he's made his way back to Twitter. He started a little blog, and the other day he, he wrote a blog, The Fair Play Coalition, um, which talks about uh, some of the issues that we face that are current uh, and very relevant, and I urge punters to get around that. If you don't follow Richard already, you can. His Twitter handle is at so the great game. 
and stateofthegreatgame.com is the actual address of the blog. So have a read of that. Um, first of all, that's the first thing I wanted to say. Mm. Second thing I want to say is I think it depends on what type of punter you're trying to be. Now, um, uh, due to ever increasing time constraints on my life over the years, um, I don't have all the time to develop or, or sorry, to, to devote to just betting. So I've got other things I've got to do as well uh, and that I want to do. And so my goal a few years ago was to um, take what were already very good automatic probabilities that I produce, um, which have, they don't just happen. I mean, there's years and years and years of development that goes into that and, and put that into a model where I could bet far more aggressively uh, into Betfair um, on an automated basis. So that was my goal at the time. Um, I spent considerable effort uh, and money um, towards developing that model. And at the time, um, product rates were different. So the actual Betfair commission rates um, were uh, less than what they are now. Because as you know, in all areas, I think Bar New South Wales, uh, up until recently, uh, they've all gone up about it, I think 16.7% or something like that sort of strikes me. Uh, and also the commission discount rates got abolished and it meant that um, the commission discount that I was getting was going to change. And so I then spent some more time over the last few months looking at that and um, what impact that would have. And sadly, it, it's meant that I can't continue with that model. So that model that was otherwise profitable is now not profitable. Uh, well, sorry, it's still profitable, but the, the risk to reward ratio doesn't if make it If I stop you there, though, and you weren't betting through, so you're, and you're betting through, in your opinion, um, like as it, what I'm saying is, what I'm trying to get to is that you, it, it's not the, it wasn't the edge in, you were getting a huge, like a, say, say, say for a casino, so to argue, it wasn't a 50-50 and you were getting, you know, uh, you weren't getting $2.10 the even money chance all the time. It's not as if we were, we were spoilt with, with a huge um, edge as in, I don't know, so I'm gone with this little thing. It really upsets me. But um, what I'm saying is we weren't, the, the taxing and everything was more than fair at that stage where you started. It's not as if taxes needed to increase. No, no, no. It, it, was, it was already, I consider, what I consider to be unfair. Correct. I understand That's it. That's what I, understand I mean. It. Betfair are running a business mm. and they've got, to, they've got to price their products based on, you know, what it costs them, right, yes. as a business as well. So I get that. I'm not sort of blaming Betfair because I'm a big supporter of Betfair as a concept. But what it's meant is, is that I just basically haven't been betting on that account at all for, yes. for virtually all this year so far today. I, I, have, a, I have another model which runs, it's a lay model. Uh, mm. It runs for smaller money, but it runs and iterates over about 900 to 1,000 races a month, and that is successful. But I have noticed the last two months um, have been decent losing months on that particular model. Now, I don't know whether that's just variance. Uh, probably is, because I, I also had a sort of abnormally very good six months or so prior to that, right? So yeah. where But at I'd the same time, part, you are paying more tax in that period. So that's just a given. I, I am. I am. And, and, and it has affected liquidity. So all I'm saying is that from an automate, if, if I was going to be, I suppose what I'm trying to say here, Nick, is that if I was starting out with an aspiration to be a model-based punter where I could somehow automate and bet full-time, I think that's really difficult to do. And, and I know how much money I spent on it and I know how much money and, uh, sorry, how much time I put into it um, and how much expertise I had um, helping me, um, you know, I employed, you know, top mathematicians, etc., to help me do all of that. And I'm not saying it's a dead duck. It's just that I've made the decision that the profit to be obtained isn't worth the effort and the risk. And I can make believe, more money doing other things. As someone who's far more gifted in the mathematical space, it's easily reversible if the taxes are put in line with what they should be to encourage turnover. So turnover goes up and the output for the industry would still be probably greater and, it would, greater. and it would create better yep. opportunities for you and I to exist in the space as well long-term and a million yep. other people. Yeah. 
Yeah, so we're looking at other jurisdictions and, and all sorts of things and, and, and ways in which we can, um, I say we, I say myself and my my, my partners, as it were, um, to, to, to make sure. You're not alone, right? But, yeah. No, I'm not alone. I'm, yeah, that, I'm that's sure a, but if, if, a, if you're it, doing this, other people have already made the decision to leave the space, haven't they? Like big players have already left the space and others are, are looking at the same sort of well, situation some have. currently. Hmm. Some have left. But, you know, I'm still actively betting. And, I, and, and, but, and here's, the, here's the more positive bit. Mm. If you're someone who wants to come into the industry and go, I want to specialise, you know, I just want to do Sydney or I just want to do Melbourne or I just want to do Queensland or whatever, mm. um, or, or focus on a particular segment of the market, then I think that there is still the opportunity to win at that and win handsomely. And I'm doing quite well from that side of it. Um, not as well as I used to, for sure, but I think everybody's in the same boat. Uh, and the taxation has, has impacted um, our profits. Um, I didn't make as much money last year as I did the year before and didn't make as much money as I did the year before that. And so it's still substantial, mm. but it's certainly having an effect. And if it keeps going this way, then... But they're not done yet. To... That's what I was going to say. No, they're, they're not they're done not... yet, are they? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. But yeah, look at the, the love of the game. I'm like you, John, and like most of our, if not all our listeners, um, you know, you're extraordinarily passionate about the game. You want it to survive. You want it to keep going because it's what we know. It's what we've been involved with for so long. It's it's so it's so so much at our core. But the the thing that you you should be doing as a punter, I think, if you want to get into this, learn how to handicap, i.e., do the form, um, and understand that. Um, there's, there's different ways to do it. My way is to use ratings. I think most successful punters I've ever come across um, and met who have made the most money out of the game yep. are ratings-based. I mean, that's just that's just fact. Uh, and um, But there is great skill in knowing how to use it and use the tools. You know, read the Don Scott books, learn, read other books about handicapping, read different papers about handicapping and the way markets work. You know, learn... Be patient, um, put in the effort, and yes, you can make um, decent money, and you, it is possible to live full time off this because I know uh, a number of people that do, and um, you know, I say you know, good on them. But yeah, the the attraction is not what, as as much as it's not as good as it once was. It's, it, so you always get sort of asked the question. It's nearly harder now to get set on a winner at a acceptable odds than it is to find the winner. And that shouldn't be the that shouldn't be the, the way it is. And if that's the way it is, it, it's uh, it's not very attractive to, to sort of landscape to enter into, is it? And that's the problem. But it can all be reversed. I just hope that it comes. And, I, and I'm worried about trainers. I'm worried about like country trainers who sort of stepped on. I talked to all these people. They're all struggling. Um, the only ones who are sort of not uh, are probably the the ones in the bloodstock side of things. And that's not a go at them at all. You know, they've just. They're capitalising on this ever raising prize money, which is unrealistic and unsustainable. And um, yeah, and I just—it's really to me—is that that word ecosystem is what it's all about because it feels like you know the Great Barrier Reef that we keep pumping oil into the Great Barrier Reef, all the coral's going to die, and this is going to die, and it's all going to die soon. And hopefully, someone jumps in and bans all the plastic straws in racing before it's um, before it's too late, and the and the turtles are all dead. But um, yeah, anyway. Well, I mean, look, it's how you how you view it all, right? So if you're P, P. Valandis mm. in charge of New South Wales racing and your object uh, or, or um, you know, your mandate is to make New South Wales stronger and effectively weaken your counterparts in the process, then I think he's doing an absolute tremendous job. You know, in, you know, you could argue that he's doing a tremendous job. You know, he's increasing prize money. Uh, there's so many good things about New South Wales racing. There are so many good things about Victorian racing. Um, and you could argue that they're doing a much better job in certain areas. I think the biggest issue you've got is that you've got principal racing authorities working against each other as opposed to working with each other. You know, they're all running their own agenda and no one seems to really care about the, the greater good here. It's all about... You know what's good for me what's good for my mandate what's good for my backyard and increasing prize money is a futile exercise because i can guarantee you if you raced for you know 70 or eighty thousand dollars on a Saturday instead of 150 the fields would be identical 
and the prize money, sorry, and yearling prices would be more achievable. Training, everything would come, price of everything would come down because the prize money's, you know, inflating things ridiculously. Well, and 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 the savings and the and the, the hundreds of millions of dollars that would be saved nationally, um, well, it may not be hundreds of millions, but it, it's a lot of money, whatever it is, right? Yeah. Whatever it is, could some of that could be put to better use in terms of educating and bringing on the next generation of punters? Because if you only think about the nightclub and you only think about what what you know what what the current group yes. seemingly want, and you just give them what they seemingly want, well. You're not actually going to have a next generation of punters to to, to line up against. And I, I saw a tweet that Brian Martin put out oh. um, of, of the Flemington betting ring on Saturday or whenever it was, mm. and it, it was it was sad, you know, to see that it could be like that. But unfortunately, that's the that's the state of affairs that we find ourselves in. And that sort of thing, like I, I, I don't like that either because I, I see the bookmakers as a big part of racing, like on track bookmakers. But it is a digital world. But that's even not the uh, that's not the issue. Like I, I, if you're saying raising prize money and having these big races and things is, is a to say that any sort of jurisdiction is high, and I don't want to pick on anyone um, at all. Uh, I, I don't think that's any sort of gauge of how racing's travelling. You know, like I think country racing in New South Wales is almost dead. I think ninety nine percent of the participants in country racing are like under huge amounts of pressure the the, the quality of the horses is, is horrendous the the jockeys coming through are pretty much non-existent it's it's those sort of things that i think need to be fed as well as you know punters i like i'm you know that i'm with you on educating punters and giving having the best possible turnover model to allow bookmakers to bet the best possible prices so everyone can turn money over and win and and not win, just have their opportunity to win. Like you, you shouldn't be gifted anything. Absolutely, everything should be fair. I don't think we should be handed yeah. a, anything on a platter. But um, for for the country, provincial, city racing to thrive and the betting landscape to thrive, everyone has to be lined up. And it's nothing to do with prize money. I agree with you there. And that's only overinflating the whole industry. So to be gauging how the industry is going on prize money alone is just is frightening and i feel like that's how it's sort of looked at and, uh, and the, uh, the other thing is that we, you know they all talk about increased wagering turnover we've had a massive spike in wagering turnover due to COVID. yeah because everyone was everyone was locked up uh, we, we, yeah as a society we've had a lot more money in mm. our pockets and disposable mm. income um interest rates were have been historically at record lows um the party that's been had is not going to continue well, it's just it's just about the it's just about the lights just went off about six weeks ago, didn't they? And it's starting to unravel, and and now they're they're so short sighted that they're they're increasing taxes, you know, fifty, a hundred, two hundred percent. Some of these jurisdictions on numbers that are artificially inflated. So simply, like you know, again, this is not my sort of forte, but any any sort of uh, any sort of mathematically minded person will would get in a room and explain it to them in five minutes that this is not going to continue. And if anything, this is the time that we should be cutting, not rising so uh well you know. it depends it depends what your objective is i mean we could go on about this all day yes. and um just an, another tweet uh i saw regarding queensland racing where it had the queensland meeting virtually at the bottom of the list um as as, a, as almost a means of trying to discourage turnover yes well, they are. They're, they're, they're actively trying to discourage turnover. And like you know, it's not even on – It's the, this tax is on where you live. It's not where they're betting. So mm. this is just the first step in a number. Like, And, I, and I, I don't know whether it's legal, but you would imagine at some point it comes a, a, a stage where if I'm in Queensland and I'm 20% uh, or whatever, maybe I don't want to bet anybody in Queensland. What, what, what happens then when Sportsbet says, well, you're in Queensland and we're not going to accept any bets from people in Queensland? Will they be allowed to do that? Yeah, maybe maybe that's a good reason. But I mean, you know, the way it's going, we'll end up with a what a New Zealand style racing product. Yeah, yeah, something like that. And I and I and you just yeah, I just I, I'm just concerned across the board because I like as you said, I, I built up good relationships with a lot of trainers and jockeys, um, owners over the time I was managing riders, and I still talk to a lot of them and 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 uh, have good close relationships with a lot of them, and most of them. And I'm not talking about city trainers, you know, like they're not the people that I had fun dealing with. I had fun dealing with the, the country guys who were trying to, you know, get their 20 wins a year to survive. And 
and they're they're really struggling. Like they're just they're all owed money because, as you said, the economy's about you know is not great compared to to sort of what it was, and and a lot of people have made big uh, commitments to horses and other things now, and and this is going to be the first bill that's dropped off as they they struggle to pay you know increased petrol bills, whatever. It doesn't matter what it is, but the the horse bill is usually the first one dumped, and then then these little little trainers are the ones that are going to be left holding those sorts of bills as well. No one's worrying about that. Uh, and I'm talking about like sort of dozens of guys I've spoken to. None of them are in a good position. And uh, like I said, they, they get a maiden winner. The benchmarking system is really pushing them to town. They, they can't keep their, their horses win one or two races at the moment in the country and they're not competitive where they have to race. It's just the whole system really eating itself alive. And uh, I hope that, you know, some smart people get involved and, and really have a good look at the whole system. Like you say, that it needs to be nationwide, but... Um, you know, only New South Wales, but there, there needs to be national um, regulation, doesn't there, for the for this industry? Well, I think a national body would help, and yeah. I think you know, lot, lots of changes need to take place at, at the wagering landscape level in order to try and reinvigorate turnover. I mean, the tote needs to be, you know, it needs a shot in the arm. Um, I'd be look, I'd be happy to put all the business through the tote if if if. if, if if the attraction was there um, and the rebates weren't, you know, geared towards a, a, the elite few, yes, um, and they made it more attractive to wager on course. And there's been plenty of ideas bandied around. Uh, yeah, um, Hong Kong's to, obviously to, a very. That's what it's like, right? So yeah, and then it's it's probably the biggest. But, but, that, but everyone gets the rebate, John. Right? Doesn't that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you if you bet the required sum, you get the rebate. Mm. Uh, I mean, it's it's a tough environment, sure, but that's not the point. I suppose the point we're trying to make is work, right? it, it it works better than just about anywhere in the world. Mm. And they, I'm sure, they generate plenty of tax to to keep the industry going and and whatever else it needs to fund. It's uh, um... the, the thing is, if punters bet a lot more, they actually make more net dollars, and the punters will bet a lot more if they're given the incentive and the inducement to do that. Everything they've done for the last ten to fifteen years has handicapped punters. It's 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 stopped you slowly, slowly, slowly from turning money over. Uh, okay, maybe we had it too good for a long time. Fair enough, and it had to even up or whatever. That's fine. But now they've gone sort of way too far, and for it to be now basically a poker machine model where they, they like if a corporate has to win between fifteen and twenty percent in turnover off a, a client for that them to be viable. These people that have got their hundred and two hundred dollars a week to spend on on gambling, which is a lot of money, if they're losing it, you know, probably I'm going to say fifty to one hundred percent quicker than they were two or three years ago, they're going to get bored of it pretty quickly. Hmm. Um, so I'll, look, I'll look for other means of entertainment and other means of, um, you know, wagering or gambling. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I, and they, and that's the that's the theory that you know recreational punters can they don't care about uh, the other scale, which is what we're kind of concentrated on but if they, they believe recreational punters can fund the industry and fund all these huge booms in prize money and everything going forward i think they're going to have a pretty scary uh outcome indeed nick that's a question we'll answer we certainly uh, covered more about the poc taxes and, and other aspects of that question but um mm. hopefully that so what's it if you've got any other um, details you want to know about you can contact either john or myself directly Punters, we'll see you next week for the review show. Um, there won't be a rapid fire show this week. There's nothing. Why don't uh, you guys that, like talking about important. crappy races? I love talking about crappy races. You guys are just too bloody, you know, too hoity toity, hoity toity. No, no, it's, it's all about a time and, and how much time we've got. And, you know, I suppose the concept of the show was originally that we'd focus on um, the uh, the better races. And look, you know, we might still review that, that decision. But anyway, until then, thanks for watching. Cheers, guys.